So I'm here today with Ram Gupta. Ram is the managing director of nibble.co.uk. I'm delighted to welcome you, Ram. How are you? I'm lovely, thank you, Mick. How are you? D delighted very, to be with you. Very well, thank you. Very well. So kick off, uh, Ram, tell us a bit about nibble.co.uk. What's it all about? Okay. Um, so nibble.co.uk was, um, was, a, was a concept um, many, many moons ago uh, that developed from an aspiration to provide uh, what we call a customer is king experience. Um, so whenever anybody asks me, I always talk about an experience that I had when I was 14 years old. And um, I had a tremendous experience from a company called Richer Sounds. And I still talk about them like it was yesterday. Yeah, but it was uh, a number of years ago, should we say. So two things um, resonate and you remember two things very clearly, either a very bad experience or a very good experience, right? And I'm thankful to say that that was a very good experience and it stayed with me, right? Um, so this customer is king philosophy um, is at the heart of Nibble um, and always will be. And it was at the heart of Nibble because it's the very reason why Nibble started, yeah? So um, as we stand now, uh, Nibble is a managed IT company. Uh, we're an audiovisual solutions provider and uh, we're a software development agency. And above all of that, sits our cyber offering. Great. And uh, what are your customers? Who? What type of customers have you got? Um, so we've got a plethora of industries that we look after. So um, from commercial dealerships uh, to um, asset finance companies, accountants, solicitors, um, uh, fleet management companies, um, uh, manufacturers. Yeah. And we, we just love being in that space because we can make a difference, Mick. Yeah. I think, you know, um, the satisfaction is not just in doing the work. Is in the difference that you make, isn't it, to people? So, uh, yeah, we just love being in that space. So go ahead, Ram. What difference do you make? <laughs> but very difficult to say. I think um, what we like to do, uh, Mick, is, is solve problems for, for, for our customers. So um, we always tell our staff that if, a, if somebody comes to you with a problem, don't give them a problem back. Give them a solution. Yeah. So if someone's got a, a problem with their uh, processes, their information technology, they, uh, they feel a bit exposed on the cyber side. They've got uh, an issue where the, uh, they don't feel that the business is functioning to its full ability, or they feel a bit paranoid about um, what might come in terms of what might come into the business in terms of their security, right? The, um, then we can help facilitate, not only giving them, giving them that umbrella, that comfort, we can help facilitate their growth because we look after that headache of the IT whilst they concentrate on their business. Absolutely, yeah. Um, so what, other than that, what else would you say differentiates nibble.co.uk from other options that might be out there? And I, I think um, I'm delighted to say, Mick, that there's lots of other options out there. And, um, you know, yeah. every option uh, should be a good option. Um, I think it's our core values, Mick. Yeah, we really believe in our core values. And um, our, our core values go far beyond our balance sheets, um, our equity and uh, our profit and loss accounts. Our core values start from right here, start from here. Um, you know, we actually believe in our social value and um, we can only uh, grow to the extent of the environment that we operate in. So we believe in delivering social value in anything that we do. So we talk about the customer experience, uh, Mick, we talk about it a lot. Um, you know, it doesn't matter who your customer is. Your customer could be your, your staff. It could be someone come to have a coffee with you. Right. You know, these days it's all about this, isn't it? It's all about snapping and uh, the experience. You know, at what point is a, a cost of coffee? Yeah. Too expensive. Yeah. It's too expensive if you've not had a coffee experience. Right. If you've just turned up, you've had a coffee and you've walked away, then four pound fifty is a lot to pay, isn't it? Right. So so we try to add value and add an experience to everything that we offer. Yeah. And that experience is very much around you know, making sure that the person who's sat in front of you feels that they've been nurtured, that they've been cared for, that they've got value, right? And for a proportion of what they spend with us, you know, we're spending on some tremendous causes. Oh, right, tell me more. Okay. So, so, so Mick, I mean, we've spoken before and, you know, we, we always talk about, um, um, we talk about a number of things, right? And, you know, what I, what I believe in is, um, trying to empower and make people better, right? So uh, people talk about the sort of employment crisis uh, that's out there at the moment. And I don't quite understand because we've got a rising population, right? And a shortage of skill. How, 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 is, that, how is that possible? 
It's not, it's not possible. So we've got more people and less people available for employment. Again, how is that possible? Again, it's impossible. I think we have to look inward. We have to look inside us, Mick. And if we look inside us, you know, if we were doing what we were doing thousands of years ago, then we would still be writing on chalkboards and using hieroglyphics with square wheels, right? So if there's an employment crisis, we have to adapt, right? And how do we adapt? We have to look further in, further look further into society, right? And if you look further into society, you can make so many things better, right? For, so for example, you know, our mantra is all about um, employing people, good people, and turning them into IT people, right? So um, I'll, I'll give an example of that. You know, we always talk about trying to create heavens, right? So we ask people, what is your view of heaven, right? So a heaven, you know, if I asked you, Mick, what's your view of heaven? What, what would you say back to me? Utopia. Utopia, right, okay. So, so for most people, heaven is this vision, right? That, um, that, you know, that you might have grapes hanging over your head and, you know, there's people serving you, there's whatever it is, it's happiness. Heaven's a state of mind, it's happiness, right? The only problem with the, the traditional view of heaven is to get there, you've got to die, haven't you, right? And to find out what it's actually like, someone's got to come back from death, right? And tell you all about it. And, you know, neither of that could possibly happen. So if you, if you imagine um, heaven as being this concept that you can create on earth, right? Everybody creates their own heaven. So for example, I'm talking to you now, Mick, right? And I'm in my heaven because I'm, I love talking to you, right? Um, I renovate my property at my home, right? I'm creating my heaven because it's going to be a great place to be, right? I'm um, enjoying a coffee with my family, right? Again, I'm in my heaven, right? But everybody can create their own heaven, can't they? Yeah. All you've got to do is push that boundary a little bit further, right? Look at other people, look at the charities, because the people who run these charities are the angels, right? That create heavens for other people, right? So we look right down into our society. We need to find those Elon Musks, right? All these people that sit in back bedrooms, right? That have got this talent just oozing to get out. If your aspiration is where am I going to get my next meal from, right? Then how can you turn that aspiration into, I want to be a nuclear scientist, yeah? You've got to deal with the first part first, yeah? Create their heaven, right? And something amazing will happen, Mick, because if, every, every, if everyone's doing that, then eventually the heavens will meet because you're creating a bigger heaven on earth. And when we transition, we will transition from heaven on earth into actual heaven. Making the world a better place. Absolutely. Love it. Love it, wow. Right. So getting back to Nibble then, what does the future hold? Um, I, I think, I think um, Mick, uh, I'll answer that in a very roundabout way. I think, you know, we, we are very geared towards our social values. Yeah? yeah. So we will continue to do, try and do great work for businesses so we can uh, make a big social impact. Yeah. And that's our mantra. Um, we, we also want to try and make our uh, staff um, be empowered and be the best that they can be. And the only way we can do that is by giving them opportunity. And there's plenty of opportunity out there for us and for our staff to be better. So uh, Nibble's motoring along. Um, we're going into different towns, different cities. We're bringing a lot of social value back into our uh, Lancashire, which is where we actually believe we can make, make the biggest difference. Yeah. Um, and we're offering a whole new um, multitude of services. So um, it's all about making things better, Mick. And in trying to make things better, hopefully we'll make things better for other people. Love it, love it. And finally, Ram, I mean, you're a very positive guy. You're a very optimistic guy. I'm sure you don't really have any regrets and any anything that bad happens, there's a reason for it and you'll learn from it and get something good out of it and be grateful for it. But thinking about the business, and this is to help people um, who are maybe going through developing their business right now, um, Looking back, um, if you kind of knew uh, back then what you know now, based on the experiences that you've had, what might you have done differently? I think it would have realised our purpose a lot quicker, Mick. Yeah. Um, I think, um, you know, right, Mick, um, everybody you meet, well, a lot of people you meet, right, will always tell you what you shouldn't do and what you can't do, right? Um, which deters you away from what you can do, right? And what you should be doing. So 
So if you imagine your mind like a big foundation, right? All we're doing in people's minds is pouring concrete into it. Yeah. So we're making our minds smaller and smaller. So if we learn from our children, right? And we look at our children, right? They have unsurmounted possibilities, don't they? Yeah. They can do everything until we tell them that they can't. So every single time we tell our child you can't do something, we're pouring a little bit more concrete into their mind. Yeah. Applying that back to your business right, is all I would say to you is don't recognize fear, yeah, make sure that you, that you empower your staff, yeah, make sure that you invest, make sure that you add social equity into everything that you do, yeah, and forget, forget about pouring concrete into your mind. When you're, when you're running your own business, yeah, you are the master of your own ship, anything is possible. Fantastic, Ram, I love that. Thank you so much for that advice. Really appreciate it, and I wish you all the best in the future. Thank you, Mick.